In this video, we are going to make a cube that looks something like this. But first, let's start with the basics. Here are two boxes to help you see the effects. The outer square is 1000 by 1000 pixels, and the inner square is 500 by 500. Use Translate X to move the box horizontally, and Translate Y to move the box vertically. Simple enough. Let's move to the Z axis. No matter what I do right now, the box stays the same. But that's because you lack perspective. This container needs a perspective property set on the parent container. Adding perspective to the parent container allows the transforms to have depth. The value you set as perspective is how far the box will appear from the camera. Your screen is the camera. With a perspective of 1000 pixels, if I move the box 500 pixels away from the screen, it's going to appear deeper in the screen. If I move the box 500 pixels closer to you, it's going to go half the distance to your screen slash camera. Notice how the box happens to fill the 1000 pixel square container perfectly. What do you suppose happens if I move it another 499 pixels? Is it going to become twice as large? No. The box is going to fill your screen as if you're just one pixel away from the box. This is really important to keep in mind when thinking about 3D transforms and perspective. In other words, if I move the box 500 pixels closer to you, that's half the distance of the perspective. If I change the perspective to 100 and move the box by 50 pixels instead, it's not going to move at all. As long as the perspective value is the same ratio as the translate Z value, the box is going to appear the same size. So, what's the point changing the perspective? And this is where 3D transforms come into play. Let's push the box back 50 pixels and give it 30 degrees of rotation. That's a nice subtle effect. But decreasing the perspective to 100 pixels completely stretches the box. So keeping everything else the same, the larger the perspective value, the more subtle the rotation will be. This is why you typically see perspective values like 1000 pixels, because they're a reasonable size but I wanted to illustrate that it really depends on the circumstances and what you're trying to do. Okay, let's get back to rotation. Changing the rotate x value is going to rotate the box around the horizontal axis, and changing the rotate y value is going to rotate the box around the vertical axis. And with that in mind, I think it's time to build a 3D cube. First thing we need is a container called cube and add a class for each side of the cube. Then we'll use translate Z to move it 250 pixels closer, and I'll rotate the cube a little bit to make the changes easier to see. Now we can add the back side of the cube, move it 250 pixels back, and add the sides, we'll move the right side element to the right, and the left side to the left, and now we can give the left side a negative 90 degrees rotation around the Y axis and do the same thing on the right, but with 90 degrees rotation in a positive direction. Now that's starting to look like a cube. We'll need to do the same thing on top, but rotate it 90 degrees around the x-axis instead. Finally, add the bottom side, and rotate it 90 degrees around the x-axis in a negative direction. Now let's take the cube for a spin, so that you can see it from all sides. And congratulations! you've just learned the fundamentals of 3D transforms. By mastering these techniques, you're opening up a world of creative possibilities, but we'll explore those in other videos. But that's all for now on writing code. I'll see you in the next episode.